Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And today's video is actually inspired by someone who asked a question on our weekend Knife AQ segment. This comes from Cyber ISO. He asks, what would you recommend as the best denim fifth pocket folding knives for EDC? Best being useful and efficient when deployed, premium, or budget? I think it's a great question and a great thing to take a look at. I've got some great knives that I think will fit. So let's check them out. So when we're talking about that fifth pocket, we're talking about a pair of jeans that has that extra pocket in front of the, uh, the right side main pocket. Originally called a watch pocket back in the day, also a coin pocket. Some folks out there probably never use it, so I wanna give you some options. But in addition to getting more use out of it, it can also be a very discreet way to carry a knife, especially if you don't use the pocket clip on any of these. Now the features that you're gonna to wanna to look for, obviously they should be small enough to fit in that pocket, kind of a no brainer. Uh, and we're gonna go things that fit inside completely for this list without having to rely on that pocket clip. Now we want it to be slim so that it doesn't impact access to the primary pocket underneath by having too much bulk in the way. And as far as shape, look at the wider profiles when they're folded up. I say that because narrower knives can sometimes fall sideways and get a little stuck. I've actually experienced this firsthand with my Victorinox Alox Bantam. I actually, I often carry it in that fifth pocket despite that issue, but for the theme of this video, I can't recommend it, even though I'm not gonna stop. This is a do what I say, not what I do in this particular scenario. But now that I've kind of laid out the ground rules of the, of the things I'm looking for here, I've got to say that the great thing about living in a golden age for cutlery these days are options. Now, depending on the size of the knife or your jeans pocket, which you know, can vary, of course, depending on the cut, but there's just enough space in a lot of those pockets nowadays that we can fit everything and find options for everything, ranging from just small backup knives all the way up to something that could be a full-on primary EDC if a smaller knife is going to suit your needs. And I'm gonna have some budget as well as some more premium options as I go through kind of all of these categories. Now first up, in the backup category, we can still get a multi-tool even if the Bantam is not the best answer but the proper Swiss Army knife for your fifth pocket is the Swiss Card series. As far as the size of this goes, if you can fit a credit card into that fifth pocket, you're gonna be able to fit a Swiss Card. These run between about 30 and 40 bucks, depending on which one you get. This one here is the Swiss Card Lite. It's got a small LED on the end. It's not super bright, but it's kind of just enough to avoid falling on your butt if you get up in the middle of the night. It's also got a pretty good assortment of tools as well. Got a nice pair of scissors here, typical spring action like most of their, uh, their pocket knife scissors, a magnifier, some drivers here on the side, pin and tweezers, that pressurized pen, and actually a fixed blade too. Not a folder, but this works really well as a small letter opener as well. But these things are nice in that they're so slim, you slip it into that pocket, you're never gonna know it's there until you need it. All right, next up, I've got a couple of designs that I consider to be backup blades that are non-locking and have got broad sheep's foot blade shapes, and that is the Spyderco Dog Tag and the Benchmade Ale Fume. Now that Dog Tag, they run from about 60 bucks to just above 70 right now. They open one-handed, as you can see, they've got that signature Spyderco opening hole, and they're held in place with a detent joint. You've got about 1.2 inches of blade to work with. You've got BD1 steel in this case with a conventional grind and an aluminum handle. And actually the less expensive one in this series actually comes with a chisel ground S30V blade, more edge retention, and those have G10 handles. So you can kind of take your pick between the two. Also, apart from just opening the blade, I've actually found these opening holes on these knives to work really well with a pinch grip between your thumb and index finger. And on this size of knife, it's kind of the only kind of hold that really works for me with my slightly larger than average hands, but it's gonna be good for getting into boxes or packages. Great for always having that backup edge for you whenever you need it. Now the Benchmade is a little bit larger and it's more of a friction folder as opposed to that detent joint. And we've got 1.6 inches of chisel ground S30V on this knife. Now the pinch grip still feels the best for me with this particular blade, although there's certainly more handle here than on that Spyderco with a little bit more girth too for those heavier grips if you do need to push through a cut. The handle itself is this really cool layered rich light material. It's similar stuff to paper micarta and it packs some extra functionality in as well. 
Cigar cutter for one, as you can see, and that's why that chisel grind is ideal on this design. We also get a small pry bar with a flathead driver on the back. It's also got a small bit driver built in as well. And then on the opening tab on the other side, we've actually got a built in bottle opener as well. Now the pocket clip on this design, definitely nice and fancy as you can see with these standoffs and the ball here at the pinch point. Makes it a little bit thicker, but you could remove it on this one and actually not lose out too much in terms of the grip or feel. And of course, it'll be a little flatter in the pocket at the same time. Or you could use this as a money clip if you want, although it's a little bit on the small side perhaps. But on that note, let's talk about some other money clip knives that are bigger and great for that fifth pocket carry if you use it just as a knife without cards or cash strapped in. Now the first is the SOG Ultra XR. It's a premium update of their cash card series coming in about 125 bucks right now. And with this, you've got carbon fiber handles with no liners. Makes it very lightweight, just 1.2 ounces, and it's crazy slim, almost as slim as that Swiss card, in fact. At the same time, though, it's big enough for a three and a half finger grip for me. Gives you a lot of real estate to hold on to. It's also fully ambidextrous thanks to the XR crossbar lock and the reversible clip. If you take that clip off completely, then you've truly got a minimal presence in that fifth pocket. Best part though is the amount of blade you're actually getting. You've got just under three inches of high-end S35VN steel. You can access it either with that thumb hole there or hold the lock bar back, give it a little flick of the wrist. And I love the blade stock on it as well. It's nice and thin and we've got an acute flat grind so you can really slice very effectively with this blade. And you can get it in this flashier gold coating or a more subtle charcoal. That material and that edge geometry is gonna give you a lot of long lasting edge to work with. Keeping in mind, of course, that this is more suited to lighter duty, but there's a lot to love going on here. Now this next money clip knife has some heavier duty chops than the SOG. And if you can carry an automatic where you live, the Microtech Exoset is definitely worth a look starting at 250 bucks. Now the broad aluminum chassis on this knife gives a lot of real estate to grab onto with a milled pattern for some grip and a huge array of colors to choose from as well, including some nice bright ones if that's your thing. Now this is a double action out the front from Microtech, so that action, as you would imagine, is quite excellent with that side mounted switch. There's actually two blade profiles available right now, and the steel does change up a bit from run to run, but it's always premium. This Tonto up here is CTS 204P, while this double edge down below is M390. Actually, pretty much identical steels just from different manufacturers. Now, some would certainly argue that the Tonto is gonna be a more practical shape between these two for EDC, but if you go with that double-edged dagger, you're really maximizing your sharpened edge. This is just a sub two inch blade, but if you stretch all that sharpened edge out on this knife, you're probably gonna have, I haven't measured it exactly, but it's gonna be about four inches, if not a little bit more, all in this very compact frame. Because of that, this Exoset probably offers just about the most capability you're gonna be able to get in a knife sized for fifth pocket carry. All right, this next knife is kind of an oldie, but a goodie, maybe sometimes overlooked these days, which is a shame because it's a cool knife, the Boker Subcom F. This knife is kind of money clip-ish in the same way as that Benchmade from earlier, but really I wanted to talk about these next two knives specifically for the way they managed to make a small knife handle feel like they're bigger in the hand. With the Subcom, it's thanks to this wide, flat contact patch of the handle, with some aggressive jimping. While you only get a two and a half finger grip for my hands, it's still super solid. We get G10 on the front with a stainless steel frame lock on the other side. And the blade itself is just under two inches made of bead blasted OS 8 steel of thin stock with a nice high flat grind. These run about 43 bucks, but as an upgrade at about 75, you can actually get it with a satin finished VG10 blade and the handle gets upgraded to full titanium on both sides of the handle for a more premium look and feel. Now the next knife that makes a small knife handle feel bigger is the Spyderco Dragonfly. Thanks to that signature way that Spyderco integrates a finger choil around the pivot. This allows me a three and a half finger grip despite it being nice and small when folded up. Still opens nice and easy one handed though and it gives you some pretty confident control over the roughly two and a half inch blade. And that confidence is only increased by that strong mid-mounted lockback. 
Now there's certainly lots of variations in the Dragonfly series, and most of them have this full flat grind for really good slicing. And you can get bi-directional textured FRN handled versions. Those are available for around 70 bucks. But for this fifth pocket scenario, I'd go with one of these smoother handle options. Either our exclusive Packawood version with the upgraded HAP40 laminate blade, or the full stainless steel handle option, which run about $133 and $82 respectively. Now, certainly any of them are going to work, but I think the smoother options might be a bit of a nicer experience for this fifth pocket scenario. All right, now these next options are starting to feel a little bit more substantial, a little bit chunkier perhaps by comparison. So if you would feel underknifed by some of the smaller options so far, these next ones might feel robust enough to assuage those concerns while still being slim enough to work as a fifth pocket carry. Now first, and on the budget side of things, is the CRKT Pilar, which rings up at a mere 32 bucks for this standard sized option. That Pilar Large, if you were interested in it, might be a skosh too big for most fifth pockets with a four inch handle length. And actually that brings up a good point. If you're at all concerned about uh, any of these knives being a little bit too long for your particular pockets, the full specs of course will be over there on our website at the Knife Center where you can check the closed length on these to see how it stacks up versus your pocket. But back to the standard Pilar, it actually features some similar features to the Dragonfly with that choil integrated there, which makes this particular knife just long enough for a four finger grip in my hands. Got a stainless steel frame lock for security and stainless steel on the front too, which should make things nice and smooth in and out of the pocket. And as you can see, we've got a little bit more girth there to hold on to. We've actually got a little bit more girth on the blade stock as well. It's a little bit thicker than most of the stuff we've looked at so far but it's got a powerful cutting shape overall with this 2.4 inch modified sheep's foot blade. Steel itself is an 8CR stainless, very similar in composition to the Aus 8 on that Boker. It's a good budget steel, but if you did want some more edge retention, bumping up to the D2 on this knife, unfortunately, will also move you into the larger sized variant. Still, for just 32 bucks, there is a lot of strength and capability right here. Now next up is another Spyderco, and I know we're showing a bunch of them in one video, but that's because they consistently put out a lot of energy into knives this size that suit a fifth pocket carry very well, pretty much more so than most other companies out there, so it's definitely worth recognizing. Now this right here is the Ambitious. It's the smaller sibling to the ever popular Tenacious, and these ring up at about 45 bucks right now. Now these have always been impressive for the fit and finish you get, which feels more premium than its price tag would suggest. We've got finely fit G10 and a shape that really fills the palm quite nicely with a two and a half finger grip for me. It gives me a lot of confidence in using this knife on some slightly heavier cuts. Now we've got 8CR steel here as well, full flat ground again with about two and a quarter inches of edge. And what I really like about that edge is that it comes all the way back to the handle combined with the shape of that handle that allows you to get your fingers right behind the edge for a lot of control over that area during detailed push cuts. Now the Ambitious may be getting overshadowed by some newer knives out there with fancier materials, but they are still absolutely worth a look. All right, next up is another G10 handled knife with a liner lock, and that's the Wee Knife Company Banter that sits just under the $110 mark right now. Now this knife shares the distinction with that Microtech from earlier as being the longest handle on this list at just over the three and a half inch mark, but it still, and just barely, sits just fine in the fifth pocket on my jeans. Of course, your mileage may vary. Again, full specs on the website. Now as a consequence of that size, the amount of grip here is quite nice, and it's definitely enough here to merit serving as a primary EDC. And with a fairly neutral shape to it as well, this is a design that should work well with a lot of different hand sizes. Now there's blue or black G10 available right now. Black is certainly more subtle, but the blue can actually be nice too. It's a nice non-threatening color, which may or may not be a consideration for you. The blade itself comes in right under the three inch mark with some appropriately thin blade stock here as well. S35 VN for good edge retention and a versatile spear point shape that lends itself well to a variety of tasks. The pivot season upgrade as well from some of the uh, less expensive stuff we've seen so far. Ball bearings going on with a nice set of thumb studs. Helps it pop open quite nicely. Really, it's just a design that hits a lot of key metrics quite well. Now, speaking of bearings, we actually haven't seen any flippers on this list. Well, except for that Pilar Large that was too large for our needs. But the penultimate knife on this list is a flipper, the Italian-made Fox Suru, 
which starts at about 150 bucks for this Knife Center exclusive version with a golf ball textured G10 front scale. Now I know I've been talking about some smoother stuff so far, so before you give me some guff about the texture on here, I will say that this is not as aggressive as Spyderco's FRN, but there are smoother aluminum options available in this series as well. Now thanks to those ball bearings and a nice detent, we've got good action as well despite it being a small blade. Blade stock itself is a little bit on the thicker side, kind of like that Pilar for some extra strength, but in this case the blade is essentially all belly as you can see. Like the Pilar as well, there's just enough room here for all four of my fingers to grab onto the knife. Now we've got about 2.3 inches of N690 stainless steel on this version, but if you want an upgrade you can get some M390 on some of the higher end of the range. You can even get a full carbon fiber version where even that lock bar itself is made from carbon fiber with a steel insert on the end for stability, brings the weight down to 2.1 ounces without giving up the solid feel of this design. And finally, we've got one more Spyderco, the Techno 2, which has always felt like a harder use small knife. It's a bit more premium overall at just above 230 bucks right now. Now we've got full titanium handles with this knife and a frame lock on the back, and it's just a three finger grip for me, but it's chunky enough for a nice solid hold. About as chunky as I think is gonna be appropriate for fifth carry. A little bit more than this, it starts to be a bit too much, I think. Now we've got long wearing American CTS XHP blade steel here. It's got a very durable edge and a nice durable looking stone washed finish as well. Now in keeping with the chunky nature of the design overall, we've got some slightly thicker blade steel here again. It's flat ground with a modified sheep's foot shape and just a hair over two and a half inches. This knife is definitely a hard worker that nonetheless is going to stay easily out of the way until you're ready to get down and dirty. And that's it for my list of the best fifth pocket, watch pocket, coin pocket, pocket knives, a lot of pockets going on, that you can get your hands on right now. Make sure to let me know what your favorites were in the comments or if there's something you prefer to carry in that extra little pocket instead. In the meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, make sure you sign up for our Knife Awards program too because nothing's gonna beat free money to spend on your next knife if you're gonna put down your hard-earned money on a knife anyway. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.